This is the theme park right Merry Go Round from the video game Theme Park. It is recreated here in Lego for my big theme park layout. In this video I'm going to show you the ride in action and then I'm going to show you all the details of it so that you can see how it works. For the details, let's first see how this module actually works. So I have my Spike Prime here, one of these new hubs, and it's controlled using these buttons. Here I can activate the program. Immediately you're going to see this lift is going to adjust itself, so the module knows exactly where it is. Same happens with uh, the cups, and now it's ready to get the first passenger in. Or oh, actually, first it's going to remove any potential passengers that are in the module so that it doesn't try to accidentally get two people into one cup. Now it knows all four people are outside of the module, so it will move to the next cup and start the normal routine. And if I put a passenger on the track, you can see she gets picked up, seen by the sensor and put into the cup. Shouldn't there be two people who are very close to each other, like here? Then you might even see two people being put up by the lift. It tries to adjust for the two people, as you just saw, and one gets down again. Now, that person comes in. And we put the last passenger here. And you can also really see in the lift, it's making small adjustments just to make sure the people get safely into the cups. And this is the ride in action, they're turning around a couple of times. Once done, the lift will get them out again. So we're lifting and getting down, and people can get out that way. Wait until the track is clear, turn again, and repeat four times. As you can see here in the track, I have split it up so that it's easier for people to actually get out and not get stuck. So if I now make some traffic as soon as he's trying to get out, you can see the track is blocked. It is not really good. And that is one of the issues I do have with this, prop, with this module. And now everything is completely blocked. So I have to reprogram that, but I'll get it fixed. It's always good with a live demonstration. Now, the module will fix itself, that's really good. And then it starts another iteration. But let's stop the module by just pressing here. I can remove all of these panels here. These are panels that are easy to replace with something else, so that instead of this flower pattern, perhaps I will have some trees or something different in the real layout, because it doesn't really look that good with all this green. But I kind of needed it for all of the stuff that is going on underneath of this module. Let's first remove these panels. Here, there's not much going on on this side, but on this side over here, you can see this grill gives us access to the display of the little hub that is lying down here. I can remove the gadget slots. There's also a gadget slot on the other side. Here you can see the clicking mechanism that I'm using for so many modules. Initially I tried another mechanism with some new gears, but it didn't really work, so I'm using this again. Here the two buttons correspond to these two buttons and the hub, so that I can press right and I can press play. Then we have two motors that are actually moving with the lift here for the lifting mechanism. And we have a big motor over here for the track. 
and a really big motor here for the merry-go-round that is turning around. So you saw the cups are moving independently and are just staying fixed on this plate here when they're turning. So let's take a look and see how that is done. If I remove this cup and this cup, like that, you can see of course there are some gears underneath. If I remove this, like that, you can see what's going on here. So the big motor I have here, let's just take this plate off as well. The motor is geared underneath here to this big gear here, this 40 tooth gear, running inside of the banana gear, so that's 40 to uh, 140 gear reduction. The gear here in the middle is actually staying fixed, or really I can adjust it using a gear here on the back in order to make small adjustments to it. But it was just so nicely adjusted, now I just broke it. But anyway, so I can adjust that, but it's typically fixed when we are turning, which means I have a 40 tooth gear here, 40 here, and these are 20 tooth gears. Meaning that this will turn twice for every time this one turns once. So in total, you will see that this actually gives us this motion of the cups that are turning counterclockwise as we are running around with the module. The track has been split in two right here in order to make it easy for people to get out. You saw me demonstrating how I could make it fail, which is nice to see that that can also happen. I hope it doesn't happen when we are running the layout. Otherwise, the system here will be resetting itself when something is really going bad. So that's really nice. Overall, this hub here is smaller than an NXT or EV3. It's actually a bit easier to build into these modules. The length of the cables is an issue, which limits how big I can make it. But then I just have to be creative about all of these design decisions. We can remove this panel here, but still the motor that I'm having here, the big one, see it right here, is pretty hidden. I don't really have that much uh, need for getting access to it. It's just running the track here, in and out, with the clutch gear in white back there. And then this outer track here will always go forward. And it works pretty nicely, as you just saw. So that's it for the mechanical details of the merry-go-round. And that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. As you could see in the layout, there are other modules I have not presented yet, so they will, of course, come in the near future. But that is it for now, so take care, have fun, and I hope that I'll see you next time.